Caputo casting blame for her own assassination two months before it happened. It's a story I was asked to report to the world if, if Budo were killed. But first, an update on what's happening in Pakistan right now. The body of the opposition leader Benazir Budo lies in a casket. Her assassination today is triggering protests and fears of widespread violence and chaos before critical January 8th elections in that country. It's a startling new jolt of instability in a nuclear-armed Muslim nation, a vital U.S. ally in the war on terror, and also the possible hiding place of Osama bin Laden. This is a photo of the former Pakistani prime minister riding in a van right before she was killed, waving to crowds. She and at least 22 others were killed during a suicide bomb attack at a campaign rally Budo had just addressed. But it also appears she died of bullet wounds. The Associated Press quoting a doctor who treated Budo as saying she had a bullet in the back of the neck that damaged her spinal cord and another that pierced the back of her shoulder and came out her chest. Pakistan's GOTV released this footage of a gun saying it's believed to be the weapon used to kill Benazir Bhutto. The Pakistani president, Pervez Musharraf, has declared a three-day mourning period and is vowing to go after the terrorists he blames for Bhutto's killing. But in death, Bhutto is casting blame for her assassination on President Musharraf. Let's get to our exclusive report now on Budo's grim warning of what might happen to her and why. Her fears of an assassination have now come true. And only now can I reveal to you what I know. This is a story she wanted me to tell the world on her behalf if she were killed. This past October, Budo sent an email to her longtime friend in Washington, her U.S. spokesman, Mark Siegel. Addressing the danger she faced in her homeland, Budo wrote these words, and let me quote them precisely. Nothing will, God willing, happen. Just wanted you to know, if it does, in addition to the names in my letter to Musharraf of October 16th, I would hold Musharraf responsible. I have been made to feel insecure by his minions, and there is no way what is happening in terms of stopping me from taking private cars or using tinted windows or giving jammers or four police mobiles to cover all sides could happen without him. At Budo's request, Mark Siegel forwarded that email to me the day he received it back on October 26th, but he told me I could not report on it unless Budo was killed. In a moment, we'll get reaction from Pakistan's ambassador to the United States. Ambassador Durrani is standing by live. But let's get to the man who received that email from Benazir Bhutto, Mark Siegel, who sent it off to me. Mark, thanks very much uh, for coming in. I know you and Benazir Bhutto were close for 25 years. You had a long-standing relationship with her. My deepest condolences to you on the death of your friend. But give us the context uh, of this email that you received from her. This was two months ago. Um, well, uh, uh, Benazir was, uh, was very concerned by the lack of security that she had on, uh, on her arrival in Karachi on October 18th. Uh, the circumstances around the assassination attempt on the, ni the night of 18th, uh, the morning of the 19th, was very, very suspicious. Uh, there was no investigation, contrary to anything the ambassador might, might later say, there was no investigation uh, of that uh, horrendous killing which killed 179 people. Um, the, uh, there, she had asked that Scotland Yard and the FBI be, involved, be brought in for uh, forensic uh, help uh, for the investigation. The government of General Musharraf absolutely refused to have Scotland Yard or the FBI brought in. Um, as we prepared for the campaign, um, um, former Prime Minister Budo was very concerned that she was not getting the security that she had asked for and that her husband had asked for. It was very, very specific. Um, that they had asked for uh, jammers to, uh, to, to, um, to set off IEDs. Uh, they, that was denied to be allowed in by the government of General Musharraf. She had asked for special vehicles. That was den uh, denied to her. Uh, she had asked for special tinted cars. She had asked for uh, four police vehicles to surround her at all times. She basically asked for all that was required for, for someone of the standing of a former prime minister. All of that was denied to her. She sent me the well, email. Let me, interrupt, she... let me interrupt for a moment, Mark, because I just want to be precise. This was two months ago, October 26th, that she sent you that email. Based on what you know, and I know you were in contact with her a lot over these two months, did she not get any of those uh, extra security precautions that she sought? 
She got some uh, police protection, but it was sporadic and erratic. She did not get the jammers that, that were necessary for the IEDs. She did not get the protection that she thought was necessary. Um, and she became increasingly concerned um, that this was not getting any better, but actually getting worse as she toured the country in preparation for the January uh, uh, 8th election, which she thought was uh, basically rigged from the top down and the bottom up. But she was going to fight the fight because she was willing to sacrifice uh, everything for the cause of democracy in Pakistan and has been for most of her life. I don't and know. Today she paid with her life. I don't know. My